Hi, welcome back to the channel. There have been some news reports about people who have recovered from coronavirus test positive for the virus again maybe in a month or two. And on this Monday, researchers in Hong Kong described the first scientifically proven case of free infection with the coronavirus. So technically a person can get coronavirus twice, but it will be different. How is it different? That's what we'll be seeing in this video. Before we begin, my name is Ajay. I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India, and this channel is where I discuss health, lifestyle, and a bit of medical entertainment. So if you're into stuff like that, please consider subscribing. Let's get started. Now these reports spark fear in people because that would mean that we'll get infected again and again, and this nightmarish pandemic will never end. But it's not really like that. The initial reports came from China, Japan, and South Korea, the first countries to be affected with the coronavirus. And these reports are what started this confusion. And then the Korean CDC studied 200 such patients who came positive again. And all of the experts now agree that this second time positive was because of faulty testing the first time around. But now we have solid proof that a person has been infected all over again. But it's a bit different. To understand it, you need some basic idea about immunology. So a quick and hopefully fun two minutes about immunology. In our immune system, there are two sort of departments. One is the innate immunity and the other is the adaptive immunity. Now the innate immunity doesn't play a big role here. So let's keep it aside for now and concentrate on adaptive immunity, which provides the actual strong protection, immunological protection against coronavirus. Now there are two kinds of heroes in this department. One is the B cells, which are like the gunslingers from the Wild West movies. These are the cells that produce antibodies and antibodies are like bullets against the virus. Then there are the T cells, which are like a medieval knight. They don't like staying far and using bullets. They like to go directly to the enemy. Here it is a cell infected with the virus and kill them directly by hand or sword or some chemicals in this case. These heroes take time to develop. In some cases, it may take up to 10 days for these responses to work in full force. And once the infection is controlled, these heroes go into retirement in the bone marrow and become memory B cells and memory T cells, forming something called immunological memory. But they are always ready to join service whenever asked for. That is, if they sense infection, they'll bounce back into full force and start doing their work all over again. Now, the antibodies produced by the B cells will be very high when the person is fighting the infection. And then once the infection subsides, this number comes down and after some time it might even become untraceable. But what is important is that these memory B cells and T cells stay alive long enough as these can bounce back into work whenever there's a new infection and they can produce all these antibodies and the chemicals that are necessary to fight the infection all over again. In fact, B cells made against the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918 is present in people even 90 years after the epidemic. And T cells made for the 2003 SARS pandemic is present in people affected 17 years later. So coming back to the story of reinfection in Hong Kong, a man who had recovered from COVID in April went on a trip to Spain returned home, got tested and came positive again. And they have been able to conclusively prove with genome sequencing that this is not some viral remnant from his previous infection or due to faulty testing, but it is actually a reinfection with a slightly different form of the virus, which is found in Europe right now. He was mildly symptomatic in his first infection, but now he is totally asymptomatic. A lot of people, even doctors are freaking out about this. In a way, it makes sense because that would mean that we can get infected with Corona over and over again. And this coronavirus is going to stay here for a very long time. We were expecting the coronavirus to have a bit more longer immunity, but the immunity may not be as effective as we thought it would be. But when you see this through the science of microbiology, the science of how viruses behave, this is not very surprising. This is how we expect a lot of viruses to behave. Dr. Akiko Iwasaki, an immunologist at Yale University, talking about this new report said, the second infection was completely asymptomatic. His immune response prevented the disease from getting worse. It's kind of textbook example of how immunity should work. And proving what I said and what is widely known about immunological memory, this person had a robust production of antibodies in his second infection. Dr. Iwasaki continued, Again, it's what the textbook says should happen. When you have second exposure to the same pathogen, you should elevate the antibody and that's what's happening. You all actually experience this phenomenon of strengthening the immune response with multiple infections. You all got measles vaccine in our childhood, right? 
This vaccine is a live attenuated vaccine, which means it is alive but it's a weak virus. It can cause infection but it will be mild and some immunity develops against the virus. Now the first dose of measles is given at 9 months of age and then at 16 months the second dose of measles vaccine is given. Now in this second infection the body develops a much better immune response and a much stronger immunological memory that should last for a very long time. So when this kid grows up and goes to school and comes in contact with the actual powerful measles virus, even if it causes an infection, it will be very mild. Now we have to note that measles infection in unimmunized children can be very serious and even fatal. But with routine measles vaccination, we have been able to avoid this to a very good extent. So the coronavirus may also be behaving the same way. The first infection will have mild to moderate symptoms or even severe symptoms and build a baseline immune response. Then the second infection might have mild to moderate symptoms or no symptoms at all but build a much more robust immune response. And also probably vaccination is going to work in the same way. That is, we might need multiple doses of the vaccine. Now this finding of reinfection has many implications. First one is that if you have recovered from the coronavirus, that doesn't mean you are not going to get it again. So till the vaccine comes, you still have to wear a mask, do the social distancing, everything. Second implication is that the patients who've had a reinfection may have only mild symptoms or no symptoms at all, but they can still spread the virus to others. Third point, this has huge implications on the vaccine development. Now this means that the vaccine should provide much more stronger immunity than the natural infection does. And also multiple doses of the vaccine, maybe once in three months may have to be given till the pandemic gets over. And if we have coronavirus outbreaks again in the future, we may have to repeat the vaccinations once in a year. How flu shots or influenza vaccine are taken by people in Europe and North America every year during winter to avoid influenza virus. So what all of this means together is that you may get coronavirus twice, but it will probably not be a serious infection. However, theoretically, there's a chance that the second infection may be much more severe than the first. But there have been 24 million cases and there have been no such proven instances yet. So even if that happens, that will be very rare. So that is not something we need to worry about. On that note, let's end this video. In the next video, I'll be speaking about the reasons why coronavirus is spreading so fast. It should be an interesting video. So to make sure you don't miss it, subscribe and click on the bell icon. You'll get a notification when I upload that video. And if you want me to talk about some specific medical topic, let me know in the comment section and so I'll try to make a video on it. If you have any questions or any suggestions for me, please let me know in the comments again. And stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. See ya.